I want to give you the five mistakes I've made in my business. Now, I made many, many mistakes in my business and I made some mistakes that could have damaged my business, but these were the five most crucial mistakes that I've made in my business and I'm glad that I'm still here today. So the first one is, being that I thought I was a, no, no, I didn't think. I knew I was a very good technician. I had all the certifications, every last certification that you could have on the market when it comes to fire alarm and security from every manufacturer, from every particular system out there. It didn't matter. I had every certification. I was very good at what I did, troubleshooting, fixing them, installing them, programming them, and even upselling these systems came easy to me as a technician. So I thought I could do this on my own. Little did I know that being a technician is only I wanted, I was going to say 10%, but no, I want to say it's like 5% of what you really need to know because you could always hire somebody who has those same set of skills and whatnot to do the job that you need to do. 95% of what you need to know is business, sales, marketing, how to get yourself in front of people so that way you can convey your message when you're actually, what type of message you're going to be sending out there, what type of post is going to convey your message, how are you going to send your message? So all of these things that I, I had no idea of what to do. So crash course. I had to learn a lot when it comes to marketing and sales, spent tons of money into things that didn't work just to figure out what did work. And I'm still in that testing phase as we are today. The second thing is I kept everything up in the mental. I knew how to do whatever task that they needed to do. And it was a little frustrating to me when I had to keep explaining to them, keep explaining to them when I didn't understand that I needed to set up a process. I needed to set up a system so that way when this person come in, here go these training tutorials, videos, step-by-step -step PDFs, whatever the case may be, here goes something to show you how to do this particular task. I didn't have step-by-step -step instructions. I didn't have a set of algorithms within my business. And once I learned that, I started setting up some algorithms. I started setting up how to take a payment from a customer, how to, whether it be a credit card, check, cash, how that, how does that kind of funnel through the business? How does a lead, how we, how do we capture a lead from the website? What happens from the website? How do they get into our CRM? Once they get into the CRM, what do we do? If a customer calls, how do you handle that call? If you have to set up and send out a proposal, how do you find the material? How do you find the price? How do you know what, what to charge when it comes to labor? All these things I had here, because I was up doing everything by myself. So what I had to do was I had to step back and I had to create some process. I had to record some videos of me actually performing whatever task that I need to delegate to somebody else. And I had to actually write it out and I actually um, put together some PowerPoint presentations. So that way, when a person come in, now I have an onboarding training process. If a salesman come in, now he has the sales perspectives where he can look at how secure securities sell their work, how they sell their business, how they convey their message to their customers so they can read it, feel what the culture is of the company and then put that with their, you know, emotion and feelings and their personality and then go out there and help the company, you know, become bigger than what it is. Now, the third thing is I had no idea how to market. And when it comes to marketing and when it comes to sales, two different things, right? Marketing is you trying to figure out how to convey your message. What I mean by that is you, you're trying to find what the what the pain points are that the customers you're trying to serve. For me and fire alarm and security, especially when it comes to home security systems, um, a lot of people don't want to pay contract. You know, these systems are uh, difficult to deal with. Um, they don't know how to add sensors. Sometimes the batteries die quicker than what it needs to be. So there's a lot of different things that these customers have when it comes to dealing with these home alarm systems. So what I have to do as a security security provider is provide solutions and not just say, here, here go a battery that'll last 10 years. No, I'm going to show you through video, through my messaging, through my, whether it be posts, blogs, however I convey my message out there online, digital uh, postcard mania. I also send, um, you know, digital print ads to, to inboxes or mailboxes across uh, the five boroughs and also up where I'm at in Rockland County. So I'm hitting all these different areas. So that way I could figure out how to convey my message. That's marketing. So I'm gathering up all my intel. How do the customers feel about these products and services? And then I'm creating solutions on top of that. So that way I can convey my, my solution as the message that we do it better. We know what we're talking about. Here's how you can make your system better. Here's my opinion on this company and things like that. So that's what marketing and sales is a totally different thing. That's how you set up your funnel. That's how you figure out when you uh, run a marketing ad, uh, what's your uh, customer acquisition cost? How much are you spending 
you know, on your advertising dollars and how much of that money is actually coming back. That's sales. So those are two different things, two different hats that you have to wear that I always thought marketing and sales was the same thing. They're two different categories. So when it comes to marketing, you also have to do sales. So I knew nothing about either one and School of Hard Knocks taught me a lot. You know, spent a lot of money with these YouTubers out there or these courses that people have just to find out that I already knew what they were talking about. I just really didn't know how to implement it. I was afraid to be myself. I was afraid to share my knowledge as if I didn't know what I was talking about. And it's kind of crazy that, you know, most of us could be in a situation like that. We have so much to share, but we just afraid to talk that somebody going to say something like, you don't know what you're talking about. I do. I'm licensed by the state of New York. I'm valid. I can say what I need to say because it's pertinent to what I know, what I've learned over the years, what I've studied, what the license say, how I could work under the license and these things like that. And the fourth thing, and this is I would say this right here damages any business. The fourth thing was I was spending too much money. Now, what I mean by that is I thought I was marketing. I thought I was doing sales. I thought I was actually spending money on Facebook ads, Google ads, and, and it was actually doing something for me. It wasn't doing anything. I was just shitting my money away. I was really just spending it and spending it and spending it, not really understanding the analytics reading the data, understanding the details. Like I said before, customer acquisition costs. I didn't know how to calculate that. Now I had to sit down and figure out if I spend a thousand dollars, how much am I going to get back in 30 days? I need to at least get back three to four thousand dollars in order for me to spend a thousand. So if I could get four thousand dollars, three thousand dollars off a thousand dollars. So that means every thousand dollars is potentially three thousand dollars. So that's how you will calculate your cost. So that means you need to spend more to make more. But if you don't know that and you just out there spending ads here, there, spinning ads there, spinning ads there, thinking that it's going to work. No, you need a strategy and that comes within marketing and sales. So you build your strategy when you, when you gather your information, when it comes in that, when that, within that marketing segment of you forming your business. So there's a lot of things I had to learn, a lot of things that I didn't know. And there's still a bunch of things that I don't know now actively learning and studying on a daily basis, trying to make a sale on a daily basis, trying to make the sale consistent because our, our focus is, uh, our niche rather would be government. We, we do very well in the government sector when it comes to fire alarm installations, fire alarm monitoring, fire alarm service. The only thing is we, I have to shell out the money maybe for like 60 to 90 days to pay a prevailing wage rate, usually anywhere between 50 to $70 an hour for the guys to, you know, finish whatever the work is. So I'm usually calling them every day. Yo, y'all finish? Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, man, because it's costing me money. So once the job is finished, when it comes to government, they'll pay you 30 days after. Um, usually you could work out where you could make it, where you could get a deposit, depending if you have a large order. I, one client I did, I had to replace like 400 smoke detectors and, you know, going back to the manufacturer, I only had a $20,000 credit limit. So going back to the manufacturer, getting smoke detectors, bases, plus all the other little things that they needed, came out to almost 40 grand. So I wasn't able to do it. So I had wrote in the proposal that they was going to have to at least give me 30% as a material deposit. So that way, when I place the order, I could just pay for it all in cash and don't even hit my credit account from my manufacturer. So that's how I did that. And the fifth and final thing that I did, this could hurt a lot of business because this is creeps and it's weirdos out there and whatnot. So I was using my home address, I would say for the bulk of the business. You know, I've been around the business about 10 years now and I just got this office maybe about three months ago so I've been using my home address for the whole entire time I understood about getting a virtual address and and putting yourself just paying for that virtual space and whatnot or even like a we work so we work space like that but I just I just couldn't squeeze the money out and how I was running the business at the time I had about you know I was up to six guys payroll was huge I was spending too much money like I said before and I couldn't even and afford a hundred dollars a month to get me a virtual space so i had to cut my expenses fired some people hired my wife got my man got my nephew got my two nephews um that's running the field doing the technician work um so i scheduled them out every day uh help them in the field zoom call them if they need help in the field and i'm trying to run my business a little bit more efficient trying to get me to step away from being a master technician and actually be the master boss and help my young ones come up and do the same thing so those are the five mistakes I've made in my business. Hopefully you learned something from this. And if you made similar mistakes or let me know what type of mistakes you made in your business. Or if you ain't even start your business yet, let me know the mistake why you ain't even started yet. Or if you ain't even make no mistakes, let me know in the comments. I'm Taurus the J.
general. I appreciate you for watching. Like, comment, share, follow the channel. Peace. Government contracting is beautiful. If you could afford to shell out the money ahead of time and then wait for you to get paid, you get a very large lump sum all at once and it's very lucrative. It could be a direct deposit or you could send it in a check. So if you want to learn how to set up and become a minority owned business, then watch this video here.